Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee. Happy Sunday and welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Be glad and rejoice in it. My co-host and friends, I've Noni right here and we have Jackie here. But let's start off first by introducing our sponsors. We have Speed Flow Investment Club, Greg Leaks of the Atlanta Housewives said it's time that we learn how to invest in our future. You can call them at 248-721-1256. Then there's United Success Network. Do you need to pay that mortgage off? Do you need a new roof, mm -hmm. a car, yep. money to catch up on those bills? Sure. Are you sending someone to college? Because you know that costs a lot now. Mm -hmm. If you are in the need and you need help, United Success Network, you can call them at 313-282-4455. Let them know you heard it on Always Moving Forward. We can't forget Mr. Antoine Bell, CEO of Bell Global Network. He makes it possible for us to be with you each and every Sunday. If you need prayer, or you just want to let us know that you watch the show, or you have any suggestions, call or text us at 313-657-5556, or email us at gwealths111 at gmail.com. But before we get into our conversation today, ladies, let's take a minute to say well done to our queen, Aretha Franklin, who we will never, well never done, forget. Queen, never. And Noni, we know that you went and you viewed our queen, Aretha. And we all know that people came from far and near. So tell us, what was it like? Well, um, Renee, it was one of the most overwhelming experiences that I have ever experienced. And I've been a lot of places, been to Rosa Parks' funeral, been to Mayor Young's funeral. But the city of Detroit actually paid a wonderful tribute to Aretha Franklin. Yes, and man, five did. days of just total respect and love for our Queen of Soul. Because Aretha never left Detroit. She stayed here. She was kind of low-key, and she would travel. But I met people from, a woman from Amsterdam, Holland. I met people from Denver, Colorado. I met people from all over the country who were just coming in for the funeral and to be a part of whatever festivities were going on. Uh, I met some sisters from Buffalo uh, when I went down to the museum on Tuesday because I felt like, you know, this is an event happening, and I'm sitting right here. I want to be a part of it. <laughs> yes. So mm -hmm. I got my butt out and went down to the museum. Uh, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided I was going to stand in line. And when I got there, the line was way back to Farnsworth. I yep. said, okay, I'm getting in line anyway. <laughs> but as soon as the museum opened, it went pretty fast. And that's yeah. where I met different individuals, and I met these sisters from New York, from Buffalo, and they were saying they just drove in that morning. And actually, you know, I did three interviews uh, with Al Jazeera uh, News was there. I did one with the Detroit News, and I did one with the Final Call. Okay. And the Final Call was giving out free newspapers, a gift copy with her picture on, and it has a wonderful story in the back about uh, Aretha's contributions to the community. Um, when I went into the museum, I never seen anything like it. I uh, view Rose's body and I said to myself you know I didn't really want to see her looking all sickly right. and everything but I was surprised because she looked so beautiful Aretha looked just like herself I mean you know that's a cliche but mm -hmm. she looked beautiful her hair was beautifully done she had a beautiful baby blue uh, gown on with sequins mm -hmm. she had a red bo blue red bottoms on with her legs crossed and so many roses. I've never seen that many roses in one place because pink was her favorite color. Okay. 
and they had the pink and uh, light lavender roses mixed in. It was awesome. People were actually crying and getting hysterical about thinking about the loss. Yes. Um, I met a, a group of sisters from um, Fort Lauderdale, and this sister told me that she had auditioned for the um, the movie that they're trying to make of Aretha, and they postponed it because Aretha got sick. But this sister could sing, honey. Okay. She sounded good. But as she was singing, they were you know taping her. One mm -hmm. of the news people were taping her. And his brother said, y'all need to stop because you're making me cry. And he started crying. Okay. I was like, wow, he's really touching. Yeah, this is remind me of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And we can all remember our childhood, our teenage, because uh, we grew up with the week. At right, least I right. did, and I know most of us mm -hmm. grew up oh, with yeah. the week. So uh, it was an awesome experience, and I think the, the city of Detroit did a, a fantastic job in uh, showing love and respect to Aretha. Yes, they so did. to the family and um, friends and relatives, God bless you and our condolences here and we wish that you uh, continue to be as successful as Aretha was in every way. She's now with the ancestors and she's with that musical crowd of yes, everybody, yes. David Ruffin, uh, Luther, <laughs> and, uh, Riri, uh, not Riri, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, all of them. So we know they're hitting the notes. They're hitting some notes. That's right. <laughs> what what about the card? That's uh, right. No, yeah. What, yeah, the card. Yeah. Okay, and this card, too, the last thing I want to say, I get long winded, I'm sorry. But the Museum of African American History, which is also called the Wright Museum, they're having an exhibit for Aretha called Think. And it's going to start September 21st, and it's going to go to January 21st, 1919. So if you get a chance, make sure you go by and view this. I'm sure it's going to be outstanding. And that's uh, Aretha Franklin exhibit, Think, at the African American Charles H. Wright Museum. Okay, and periodically we will uh, mention that on the show, too, okay. because we want everyone to come out that would you know, be and great. continue to R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yes. But, Jackie, you have something here you'd like to share we with us? I have a T-shirt of a different faces of Aretha, her different faces, you know, and, and the pictures are beautiful. And these are one of the yeah. things that you had, you got yeah, when yes, you was- Yes, the vendors were out there and they were selling different things, uh, photographs, pictures. I thought the t-shirt uh, would be the most lasting memory. Was this at New Bethel? Or this at was at New Bethel. <laughs> New Bethel. Okay, so the t-shirts are a keepsake. They definitely keepsake. Right, and you got something on the back too. Mm -hmm. We have some words for Aretha. Okay, Aretha, the queen of soul, respect. Okay, so we've got to keep that going, respect. Okay, I want to thank you for sharing that information and Jackie for showing that uh, T-shirt there. And, and I want to let you ladies know, because I did pick up a couple of T-shirts and I picked up a red one the other day. Oh, okay. So I had on the red T-shirt and I had on my red shoes. Did you have your red bottoms on? They weren't red bottoms, <laughs> but they were red. Okay. <laughs> they were red. <laughs> Well, you gotta get up and not. You gotta keep up. Really, really, she had the red bottoms on. Okay, but just to let you know, I was in color with it. Yeah, that's right, my I sister. was in color with yeah. it. When I'm laid out, I have on them bottoms. <laughs> okay, right. but let's get into our topic here. Second Timothy, first chapter, seventh verse states: For God gave us a spirit not to fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Our topic today is taking risk. And we learned that taking a risk, Risa took a, took a risk. Yes, she did. You know, when she stepped out there and paved the way with her risk for a lot of people. But everything in life is a risk. You are given only two options. Take a risk and, re and expect results. That's right. Or don't take a risk and expect nothing. Mm. Stop procrastinating. Okay. God uses people who are willing to get out of their comfort zone. He uses people who are willing to take that risk. What risk are you facing? Is it a relationship risk? Mm -hmm. A family risk? A business risk? A job risk, a life decision, a medical risk, 
whatever you are facing, yes. know that the Lord is with you and he makes it abundantly clear, abundantly clear that he will help you. When you are called to step out there on faith, realize that your God is greater than any problem. Yes. Be still for a second mm -hmm. and remember who is in control. I always say, don't miss out. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. No risk, no reward. Deuteronomy 31st chapter 8 verse states, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake, or forsake you. you. Or forsake you. Do not fear. Ladies, share your feelings about taking risks. You know, um, risks... A lot of people think uh, are, they're bid to some to people, and to me, some of the risks that they face aren't very big to me because I'm an educator. But then some people take a big risk going to school. It's mm -hmm. big, humongous for them to go to school, continue their education, mm -hmm. and they talk themselves out of not going and finding reasons and excuses, even like driving. My granddaughter, 19, she don't know how to drive. But she know, she know how to drive, and I took her out. And then she, when I wanted her to start driving again, oh, Grandma, I done forgot everything. It took her two days to build up enough nerve to get behind the wheel mm -hmm. to drive, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just taking that risk. I didn't forgot where the, the gas pedal was at <laughs> and the brakes was at. I say, it'll come to you when you get behind the wheel, and I'm not going to let you go unless you <coughs> know what they are. Right, but, right. you know, simple to us, that's simple because I drive all the time right. mm -hmm. and because I teach. But to some people, those are humongous risks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And taking risks are something that is very hard for an individual to step out because I don't know if it's because they are afraid or they just don't have enough um, confidence. I would say self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So when you're mm -hmm. able to take a risk, that means you break out of that comfort zone and you step out there on faith. Right, right, and it is right. faith that brings us through all of these different mm -hmm. things. Our belief that it's going to be okay. So take that risk today. If you have a risk for a business idea or even if you have a health challenge, you need to explore some possibilities and be willing and trusting that the good Lord, our God, will, will see you through. He's going to walk you through it. Mm -hmm. Because Renee just said, he will not leave us or forsake us. Right. And if you truly believe, then take that risk. If it's a business venture, if it's something different you want to try, mm -hmm. buying a new home, right? Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> getting into a, a different um, environment or whatever. Correct, yes. Risks are important because all of us here at this table have taken risks. Yes. And I must say, when I take my risks, I trust that God is going <laughs> to see me through. And even if they don't come out to the, to the, the way they should be, okay, so be it. Then well, I try something else. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't believe in God. But, but the fact is, take the risk. Go study what it is that you want. Study to show yourself approved, okay? Go and study. Go look at if you want to do a business. Go and study the business that you want to get, in, get into. Go and, because you can go on Google now and bring up everything. Yes, you certainly can. But you know what? Taking that risk, mm -hmm. if you don't take the risk, doing nothing right. does not change your current situation. Right, That's true. right. Worrying and being afraid doesn't change a thing. Right. It just stops you from getting what you desire. One of the most painful things in the world is living with regret. That's right. You yeah. don't want to say to yourself, I wish I had taken a chance. Mm -hmm. Right. I wish I had taken that risk. You will never know. If you don't try. That's right, true. take that That's faith. True. But ladies, do you believe it's riskier not to take risks? Nothing comes out of not taking risks. 
all your life you're going to have to make choices. And every time you make a choice, you're taking a risk mm -hmm. or you're blocking yourself. But the more knowledge you have, because some people, some time the spirit of the Lord will bring what you want right to you. Yes, yes. And you have to say yes or no. And a lot of us will say no. They will turn, we will turn our blessing down mm -hmm. and don't realize we did it until maybe later on down the road. Wow, I got that opportunity to mm -hmm. do something five years ago and told the person no. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Take the risk. Mm -hmm. Get and educate yourself Knowledge brings wisdom, you know, wisdom is knowing how to use knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you take it and you work with it to better yourself, better your family. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. And taking risks are very important as well because sometimes when we take risks and we keep bumping ourselves up against obstacles and obstacles, then you have to, you have to pull back and think, what's going on here? Is right. this really the way that, uh, that I, I should go? Yes. And sometimes when you keep bumping your head and these obstacles, it's not the way you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So right. you've got to pull back and rethink what it is you're trying to do and right. go a different path. Right. And this is where a lot of people get their disappointment because they keep bumping yes. and bumping mm -hmm. yes. and bumping. And it's me. not the direction that they are supposed to be going in. Right. That right. will lead right. them to that road right. of success. Yes. I'm going to force yes. this. Yes. I'm going to force this yeah. issue. But you know, faith means taking risks. Absolutely, it does. Mm -hmm. When you read Hebrews, we notice that so many risks mm -hmm. were taken by faith. Yes. When you are absolutely sure that God mm -hmm. is leading you to do something, then keep your eyes on him. Jesus led Peter to take risks. Jesus wanted Peter to trust and have faith in him. That's right. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Remember when Peter started walking on the water. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't believe. Toward right. the Lord. And it was only until he got distracted mm -hmm. and he started to sink. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be distractions. Always. But we can have faith in God to act on our behalf. Yes. Would you agree? Ladies, women are the biggest, the biggest culprits when it comes to taking risks. Would you believe that? Yeah, I I could, with, with women, we're so curious and nosy and, and want to <laughs> find out everything. Yeah, I can believe that we're one of the biggest ones that, that hop that leap of faith. And I think about when um, I was told when I was a teenager that I would be a teacher. Uh -huh. So when I got older and grown, I said, they don't make no money. <laughs> Not enough. True. Uh -huh. and, and, and I don't want to go that way. But, I mean, you walk into your destiny. Yes. You walk into it. You might not want to, but you'll get to a point where you walk into it. And my uh, grandfather would always say, when the student is ready, the master will appear. Yes. When yes. you are ready, do your homework, do your research, mm -hmm. open up your eyes and look and see things around mm -hmm. you. Doors will open up. But yes. be ready to say yes when they do. And also, yeah. you must keep the faith. You have to believe in your vision, and you must create your own vision. Because there will be uh, naysayers, people that are going to tell you, oh, you can't do that. Right. Oh, that's not going to work. Right. Right. Where did you get yeah. that crazy idea from? Don't yes. hear it. Don't hear it. If it's your vision, and you think it's going to happen, then you've got to keep that faith in yourself and in the higher uh, being in God. He will see you through. If it's but you know what? The, the biggest naysayers in our lives are what? Family and friends. Family and friends. <laughs> Family yeah. and friends are the biggest naysayers. But you know what? I say this because women underestimate their abilities. Yes, and we buy into self-doubt. Let me finish this, Jackie. Yeah. Too often, mm -hmm. too often, what do we do? We let our misgivings yeah. about whether we have what it takes to succeed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get the better of us. Yeah. Yeah. I hate to say it. That's true. I hate to say it, but we women don't trust sufficiently in our own abilities to rise to the challenge. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's you know, true. go ahead, Jack. But but a lot of it comes from 
undereducated, being undereducated, and not being exposed to enough black people of our culture that we see as being successful. So we become a product of what we are taught in school and what we're taught in our life. Because if you're not surrounded by those black people who are, and I'm saying black because I'm black, and yes. they're not successful, and you don't see them going anywhere, then you become a product of your So if you don't get out your neighborhood. Well, you can get <laughs> yeah. it. You can stay you in your neighborhood, but you, gotta, you, you have to change your explore. environment. Right, change that mindset. You've got to change, change that your environment, and your environment is what? Where you start, that's your neighborhood. That's your neighborhood. That's your neighborhood. Go ahead. And you know no. something? You have to think about your upbringing. That environment mm -hmm. plays yes. a great part. Yes. And you got to move out that environment sometimes. Yes. Because otherwise you get sucked in and pulled in to just stay there. Right. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a witness to that. I left my environment. My environment was sisters hanging out, drinking, 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 <laughs> drinking, drinking, and I was like, you know, this is so boring. This is not me. What is it? What is happy about this? Uh -huh. You know, drinking every day. You know, and that's when I left my environment, and I said to myself, now, nah, what are my vision for myself? So yes. you have to create a vision for yourself. Yes. Write yes, it down. Yes, you do. Write right. it down. Right. When I teach my vision boards, I tell the kids. Your vision for your future. Are you going to college? Are you going to go to um, just get certification? What are you going to do? Put that vision on that board and work it through. No mm -hmm. matter what happens, you may have to make some twists and turns, but your vision is your mission in life. And it's already been destined from the time we were born. I never thought I was going to be an educator. I wanted to be the fashion designer. And I am both that. I am an educator and a fashion designer. But as far as my environment, you know, you're not going to be no fashion designer. You can't do that. But I've been sewing since I was nine. Why, yeah. why shouldn't I? Right, right. Okay. He was being trained to go right I into it. I was trained to go right into it. So take those risks, ladies and gentlemen. Get out there. Remember that this is your life and you can do whatever you want to do. Follow your dreams. That's what I tell the students. Follow your dreams. Yeah. And people are going to tell you, no, it can't happen. Though. Do what your daddy did. Do what your mom. No, no. Follow your dreams. Yes, I, yes. I, re I remember coming up. My father would expose us to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We went to the museum. Mm -hmm. The DIA, and when I'm saying these things, because when I started teaching, I was just amazed, knocked out of how many people live in the city that didn't go and exercise those things that we have available to us. You know, going to the DIA, <laughs> mm -hmm. going to the museum, going to the science center, traveling. And my daddy would always say, it's a sorry person that don't go outside their neighborhood and explore right, right. those things beyond their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Explore the city, mm -hmm. then explore the state, then explore other states and cities. And he said, that brings about that knowledge and that education, and you'll see things the same and things not the same. Okay. But never let yourself get into a rut that you steadily say no, 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 no to your blessings. Accept your blessings. Accept who you are, because so many of us don't believe in ourselves. Right, you right. You have to believe in yourself. Right. You, you mm -hmm. are somebody. We are somebody. Right. And, and you know, when I was growing up, I was raised in, in Catholic school. Okay. So we went to museums. Okay, and you had the culture experience. You know, right, we had the mm -hmm. culture experience where my next door neighbor, they didn't have that. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So when I started teaching, you know, I would make sure I would bring yes. different things into my yes. classroom. Right. So my students could go further than just around the corner. That's right. That's right. That's you know, further than around the corner. That's right. You know, I made sure that they could see it. But uh, I know we don't have much time left, but I'd like to leave this with you, uh, audience, and I want you to ask yourself these questions and write them down. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself these questions. What would I do if I were being more courageous? More courageous. What would I do? Mm -hmm. How would I step out there? How will inaction cost me one year from now if I do nothing? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. If I do nothing mm -hmm. and I'm in a year from now, I'm in the same place. Yeah. Right. I'm in the same right. place because That's I did not are. take that risk. That's right. Right. Where is my fear? Ask yourself this question. Put yourself in this question. Where is my fear of failure causing me to overestimate the size of risk? You, you know, you can relate it to when you have to, when you're going down to the church, you got to step up and you got to walk down that aisle when you're going to be joining the church. The pastor open up the doors and say, all those who want to join. And you don't want to walk down the aisle because you're embarrassed. You're right. Wanna you don't want to walk down the aisle, but you know what I tell, <laughs> tell the person next to me? I can't walk for you, but I'll walk with you. you walk with them I'll right. walk with them down there. But you know what? underestimate myself and holding me back from mm -hmm. taking risks right. that would serve me. Yes. Remember, and remember this, fortune favors the bold. I agree. Fortune favors the bold. So what I want to say is, until next week, always keep moving forward. And remember, Yes. God loves you, yes. and so do yes. we. So we'll see you next Sunday. R -E -S -P -E -C -T. R -E -S -P -E -C -T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to you. Have a little respect, spec, spec. Have a little respect. Spec, spec, 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 have a little respect. Spec, spec. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. <laughs>